Welcome back to part six of this module on functions. In this part, we'll use pointer variables to design functions that pass by reference. Recall our attempt to write a swap function. It failed because a and b were passed by value. The values passed to the function were copied to separate local parameter variables. So the original variables in the calling function remain unchanged. Now that we have pointers, we can instead pass references to variables instead. Here's what it would look like. Instead of passing two integers, we pass two integer pointers. This is referred to as passing by reference because we're passing references instead of values. You've actually already seen something like this before. Recall that we had to use the ampersand whenever we use the scana function to read an input. What we were doing was passing the memory address of the variable x so that the scana function could manipulate it and place the value read in from the user into that variable. If we had to pass by value instead, scanf would not have been able to manipulate our variable x. Let's take a look at a live demonstration. Here's that same code visualization website. A and B are initialized to 10 and 20, and we print them out. We then pass them by reference, passing the memory addresses of A and B instead of their values. When received, they're pointers to the original variables. So when we swap them, temp receives a value of 10. The thing that A points to receives the value 20. And the thing that B points to receives the value 10. Back in the original function, since we passed them by reference, they're now successfully swapped. To recap again, passing by reference means that pointers to variables are passed instead of copies of their values. Functions can make changes that are visible to the calling function. This has a few consequences. First, functions in C have side effects. A side effect is an observable change or modification to the state of a program outside the local scope of the function. A function can have an effect beyond its own computation. This may be a good thing or a bad thing from a design point of view. We'll take a neutral stance on this and just say that it's a thing. It also means that we can, in a sense, have our functions return multiple values by exploiting pass by reference variables. To understand that, let's get some more practice by doing a couple of exercises. First, we'll modify one of our distance functions to utilize a pass by reference variable instead of using its return value. Next, we'll implement a new function to calculate a line graph to demonstrate how we can effectively return multiple values in a function. Recall that a line graph is defined by y equals mx plus b. m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Given two points in the plane, we can compute the line that they define by calculating delta y over delta x and using one of the points to find the y-intercept. We'll need to design our function to return both m and b. Here's our distance program from before. Let's change the Euclidean distance function to use a pass by reference value instead of returning a value. We'll change the function to a void function and place a pass by reference value as its first argument. Now, instead of returning a value, we'll dereference the dist variable and set it equal to the distance. Don't forget your empty return statement. It compiles just fine. We will need to change our main driver here, however. Instead of returning a value, we need to pass that variable by reference. This is passing it by value. We need to place an ampersand in front of it to get its memory address. And it works as before. 
Now, there's not that much of a difference between the original version and this version. So it really didn't bias that much. Now let's see one of the advantages of pass by reference. M and B are being passed by reference. The rest are being passed by value, since we're not going to be making changes to them. Now, as I've written this here, it'll work. But we're doing arithmetic and a dereferencing operator at once. Let's make it clearer by placing parentheses around the dereferencing operation. Now let's compile this. The line from 0, 0 to 2, 2 has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. Let's try one with a steeper slope. That slope is twice as steep with the same y-intercept. Same slope, but shifted up by 1. So the y-intercept is 1. Now let's try some edge cases. From 0, 0 to 0, 1. That's a vertical line. So there's going to be an infinite slope. From 0, 1 to 1, 1. That's going to be a horizontal line. 0 slope and a y-intercept of 1. 0, 2 and 0, 2 are the same point, so they don't define a line. And neither answer is correct. So there are some edge cases that we might consider as errors. If the user gives us input that defines a vertical line, or does not give us two distinct points, we may want to communicate that that's invalid input. That'll be the topic of our next series. Conveniently, we've rewritten our functions here to be void functions. What we could do now is reuse those return values to return what are called error codes to indicate that an error occurred or didn't occur and what type of error might have occurred.